welcome back mighty family to another dr eric debunks today i want to talk about brain health i know we have all met those 90 year olds that are as sharp as a knife and wondered what is the secret recipe on the other end of the spectrum we've also met people in their 60s who are struggling with dementia today i want to discuss how we can maintain our brain health for the long term so first let's review what happens to our brain naturally as we age there are certainly a lot of changes I wanna talk about three big ones. So first is the shrinking of the brain. As we age, our brain volume decreases and the number of brain cells and their connections also decreases. This loss of brain tissue affects the brain's ability to process and store new information. As a result, we will all eventually experience age-related memory loss. The second is reduction of blood flow. As we age, all the blood vessels in our body will become more calcified or filled with cholesterol effectively decreasing blood flow. When this happens in the brain, there is a reduction of oxygen and nutrients to brain cells, leading to their degeneration and death. And lastly, chemical changes. As we age, the level of certain chemical transmitters or chemical messengers in the brain can change, leading to changes in brain function, such as memory or even in behavior and mood. Overall, these changes can affect the ability of the brain to form new memories, recall old ones, and process information efficiently, leading to memory decline. However, it is important to note that not all individuals experience the same level of memory decline with aging, and some may maintain good cognitive function well into old age. I wanna take a moment now to clarify a few terms we hear all the time, such as dementia, mild cognitive impairment, or age-related memory loss. It is important to know the difference because the management of them are vastly different. So normal age-related memory changes. As we age, it's common to experience mild memory changes such as forgetting names or misplacing items. While these changes can be frustrating, they are typically considered to be a normal part of the aging process and do not necessarily indicate a serious memory disorder. Mild cognitive impairment refers to a stage of cognitive decline that is more significant than normal age-related changes, but not as severe as dementia. While mild cognitive decline increases the risk of developing dementia, it does not always progress to that stage. Dementia. This refers to a group of conditions characterized by significant memory loss and cognitive decline that interferes with daily functioning. The most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, for which there's currently no cure. While there's no reversal of dementia, Early diagnosis and appropriate management strategies can help slow down the progression of symptoms and improve quality of life. There are many different types of dementia, each with unique characteristics and underlying causes. I wanna briefly review some of the most common types. So Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia, accounting for around 60 to 80% of all causes. It is characterized by the accumulation of abnormal protein deposits in the brain, which lead to the death of brain cells and a decline in cognitive function. This decline tends to be more progressive and takes place steadily over time. Vascular dementia. Vascular dementia is caused by reduced blood flow to the brain, often due to a history of a stroke or other vascular conditions. It is characterized by a decline in cognitive function, including memory loss and difficulty with problem solving and decision making. This progression tends to be stepwise, meaning it is a steep decline, a period of stability, followed by further decline. Lewy body dementia. Lewy body dementia is characterized by the buildup of abnormal proteins in the brain called Lewy bodies. It can cause a wide range of symptoms, including cognitive decline, hallucinations, and even movement disorders. Frontal temporal dementia. Frontal temporal dementia is a group of disorders that affects the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. It is characterized by a decline in language, social skills, as well as changes in behavior and personality. Parkinson's disease dementia. Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurologic disorder that can also cause dementia. It is characterized by tremor, stiffness, and problems with movement as well as cognitive decline. Unfortunately, these types of dementia are not reversible. However, as clinicians, it is so important to make the right clinical diagnosis as there are types of dementia or cognitive decline that are reversible. And if recognized enough, proper management can lead to recovery. So for example, people with severe depression may often experience memory loss and even show signs of dementia. I've had a patient for months that started having substantial memory loss, inability to perform basic daily tasks, and was beginning to be unable to take care of herself. Her family was worried that she was developing Alzheimer's given it ran in their family. Upon spending more time with her, 
I was able to find out she was grieving the loss of one of her lifelong friends and was severely depressed. Recognizing this, we were able to get her connected with a behavioral health specialist as well as start her on an antidepressant medication. In a few months, her memory started improving and she was beginning to look a lot more like herself. In these circumstances, we diagnosed these patients with pseudo-dementia, as once we improve these patients' depression, their cognitive function will begin to improve as well. Other causes of reversible memory loss include vitamin deficiencies. For example, people who have severe alcohol use disorder can develop B1 or thiamine deficiency. If it gets severe, they can begin to suffer from confusion, memory impairment, and if it goes on for too long, they can develop even memory loss and changes in their behaviors. If diagnosed early enough and given adequate vitamin repletion, the cognitive decline can be recovered. Other more acute causes of reversible memory loss would be acute infections, thyroid disorders, or even medication side effects. Therefore, it's important to consult with a healthcare professional if you or a loved one is experiencing new significant memory loss. They can conduct a thorough evaluation, identify any underlying causes, and recommend appropriate interventions or treatments based on the specific situation. Let's switch gears. Knowing that so many types of dementia are not reversible, it becomes important to think about what we can do now, starting today, to maintain our brain health for the long term. I don't know about you, but I definitely want to be one of those sharp 90 year olds. So several techniques and strategies have been shown to improve memory, and I am certain none of these will surprise you. Here are the proven methods and also how it helps with the brain health. So first, physical exercise. Regular physical exercise has been shown to improve memory and brain function by increasing blood flow to the brain and promoting the growth of new brain cells. The second is sleep. Getting enough sleep is essential for memory consolidation and retention. During sleep, the brain processes and consolidates memories, so getting a good night's sleep is important for memory. I remember when I used to have to do 24-hour shifts in the hospital, and by the 22-hour mark, my short-term memory was almost non-existent. The third is mental stimulation. Engaging in mentally stimulating activities such as reading, playing puzzles, and learning new skills can improve memory and cognitive function. I've had some of my geriatric patients tell me to never retire because working for longer helped keep them sharp. But once we retire, we tend to start becoming more idle. So it's very important to find new hobbies to stay mentally active. Next is stress management. Chronic stress can impair memory function. So managing stress through techniques such as meditation, yoga, or deep breathing can improve memory on a regular basis. Lastly, socialization. Staying socially active and engaging with others is so important as we age. By socializing, we are getting that mental stimulation. By spending time with people we love, we will naturally feel less stress. Even as we age, it is never too late to find new friends to explore new hobbies with. Lastly, I wanna dive into nutrition and talk about what foods are recommended for brain health. There are many that can be incorporated in your diet on a regular basis. So the first, fatty fish. Fatty fish such as salmon, trout, mackerel, sardines are rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Studies have shown that regular fatty fish consumption contributes to improved cognitive function that is significant and is not achieved by simply taking omega-3 supplements. A quick way that I love cooking a filet of salmon is simply sprinkling some salt, some pepper, some garlic powder, and olive oil, and throwing it in my toaster oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes and then finishing it with some lemon juice. So it doesn't need to be complicated. Next is blueberries. Blueberries are packed with antioxidants that may delay brain aging and improve memory. They're also rich in flavonoids, which have been associated with enhanced brain function. Think about them for breakfast or even a late afternoon snack. Turmeric. Turmeric contains a compound called curcumin, which has a strong antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties and may help improve memory and reduce the risk of cognitive decline. One way I have been improving and incorporating this in my diet is as a post-dinner tea. It also it has an added benefit of aiding in digestion. All right, next is nuts such as walnuts, almonds, cashews. They're all a great source of antioxidants, healthy fats, and vitamin E. They have been associated with improved brain health and memory. So instead of reaching for the bag of potato chips, reach for the roasted walnuts instead. All right, oranges and other citrus fruits are high in vitamin C and is vital for preventing mental decline and supporting brain health. 
eggs. Eggs are a great source of several nutrients that are important for brain health, such as vitamin B6, B12, folate, choline, and choline in particular plays a role in memory and cognitive function. Lastly is green tea. Green tea contains compounds like catechines and antioxidants that may enhance brain function and improve memory and focus. So instead of the morning cup of coffee, try switching it up with the occasional cup of green tea. So as you can see, these are all very common foods that we can strive to incorporate in our weekly meals. Now that we have discussed healthy whole foods, I also wanna take a brief moment to address supplements for brain health. Currently on the market for brain supplements, it's expanding, it's exponentially. There's so many new products out there, but from a doctor's perspective, there's currently none out there that is proven to be effective. So at this time, I would avoid any supplements for brain health and stick to what we know works. So if you do feel like a supplement is right for you, please talk it over with your primary care provider to ensure that it is at least safe to use and to try. All right, let's wrap up today's session with some mighty takeaways. Cognitive decline is a part of natural aging. However, remember that regular exercise, healthy whole foods, and plenty of rest is still the recipe for success. So get into those good habits now. Two, what differentiates dementia from mild cognitive impairment or age-related memory loss is that it is a more severe cognitive decline and memory loss that also affects your ability to do day-to-day -day activities. Three, if you or your family member are showing acute changes in their cognitive function, seek medical attention immediately as it may be a reversible cause and adequately treated once diagnosed early. Lean into regular consumption of fatty fish as there is good research showing its positive impact on brain health. And lastly, don't believe the hype when it comes to supplements for the brain. There is nothing currently in the market proven to be effective. All right, Mighty Health, this wraps up our segment for today. As always, I look forward to connecting with you all again soon. For those that are not a part of the Mighty family just yet, check us out at MightyHealth.com for more. We're striving every day to be the modern holistic home for healthy living.